Hello everybody and welcome back to the ASUS North America YouTube channel. This is JJ once again. If you guys have been checking out the channel, you guys have seen that we just released a video that focuses on the brand new ASUS NVIDIA GeForce GTX 760 uh, graphics card and we covered that pretty in depth in terms of an overview that talked about the features, the design, uh, the non-reference aspects, pretty much all kind of the ins and outs specific to the graphics card. This video uh, is going to actually be focusing specifically on aspects of performance such as temperatures, acoustics, overclocking, as well as gameplay experience, not only in a single card, but as well as in two card or SLI based configurations. So as always, we're going to be breaking down a lot of information for you. So guys, make sure to check out the entire video and make sure to leave your feedback uh, once we go ahead and reach this up and uh, reach the end and we wrap things up for you. So next up, we're going to of course talk about the test bed in itself, give you a little bit of perspective in terms of how we've set up our test bed environment for showing you gameplay performance, as well as all the other respective performance characteristics of our new ASUS GeForce GTX 760 DirectSU 2. Alright guys, before we jump into the performance aspects of our brand new ASUS GeForce GTX 760 DirectCU 2 card, we're going to be talking about actually our test bed configuration, giving you a little bit of perspective of what we have set up here to be able to show you guys these performance attributes for our new graphics card. So starting off, uh, we've of course got this awesome high performance ultra premium uh, test bed kind of AKA chassis uh, from Inwin. This is their Inwin D-Frame in the red. Uh, it's just an outstanding chassis, huge amount of flexibility and of course works perfect for what we're looking for in in terms of giving us a huge amount of flexibility internally as well as a large degree of flexibility when it comes to additional airflow for all our key components. So that's once again, that's the Inwin D-Frame. Uh, in terms of the power, we've also gone ahead and worked with Inwin here and we have an 80 plus gold PSU. This is specifically their 800 watt uh, Desert Fox uh, PSU. So not only does it come in this really interesting uh, kind of like a beige or camo fatigued um, color, uh, it's also high performance, high efficiency, very quiet in terms of its operation and modular based PSU. So efficiency, quiet, and high performance fits perfectly with the entire kind of test best ethos. And of course it supports two-way and even three-way based SLI configurations while we're only going to be focusing on a single and two card based configurations, more enough power to be able to take care of everything, including the overclock for our system. Uh, speaking of overclock, if we take a look at the motherboard behind everything that we have installed here, we have our brand new Maximus 6 Hero. So this is our high performance entry level ROG motherboard for the Z87 series chipset. Uh, it supports all the overclocking, tweaking and tuning and the expansion capabilities that we need. Perfect as a baseline for high performance gaming, gaming system, which is what we have here. Of course, underneath this high performance Noctua heatsink, we have a fourth generation core series processor. It's an i7, it's a 4770K that we have overclocked on our board to 4.8 gigahertz. And of course, to be able to take care of that increased uh, thermal output from that overclock, we've got Noctua's awesome high performance NHU12S uh, series uh, tower heatsink. So that's keeping things really nice and cool with our overclock. It's going to keep things reliable, solid, and we've gone ahead and uh, pushed this into a push and pull based configuration with two additional high performance Noctua fans. Of course, that rounds out all the additional Noctua fans that we're utilizing here from their NF PWM series uh, for our supplemental airflow. Okay guys, so moving from the Noctua cooler here, we've got some awesome high performance DDR3 memory modules. We've gone ahead and tapped Mushkin for their Redline series. This is their ultra high performance kind of gaming and overclocking centric base memory. These Redline modules are rated for DDR3 2400 base speeds, eight gigabyte DIMMs. So these are ultra high performance, not only in the fact that they're high density, but high frequency. So a total of 16 gigabytes. Uh, of course, the uh, specialized entire heat sink casing that they put on the memory modules help keep things nice, cool, and reliable, help to ensure the best stability, especially with this overclock that we're running here on our system. So that's the Mushkin Redline 997122R base memory kit really nice set of memory. Of course, for our storage duties in terms of the operating system, helping to keep everything super fast, responsive, and very quick in terms of launching all our benchmarks and games, we've got Mushkin's Kronos Deluxe 240 gigabyte SSD. So that optimally, of course, is a SATA 6G SSD, works perfectly here for our Z87 series motherboard, keeping everything really nice and responsive. And then, of course, here, what we're really focusing in on uh, is going to be the GPU. So here we've got our Asus uh, GeForce GTX 760 directs you to graphics cards and we have them set up here in an SLI based configuration. Of course, taking advantage of the Maximus 6 Heroes ability to run SLI and we've even got that additional spacing to go ahead and aid in airflow. Um, so 
From there, now uh, most of you guys have generally asked for us to try to give information relative to 1080p. Most of the benchmarks that we're actually going to be talking and showcasing to you are, are all at QHD, QHD resolutions. So that's 2560 by 1440 and we're taking advantage of our high performance PA279Q QHD based monitor. Um, but keep in mind that pretty much everything we're going to be showing you is a really solid gameplay experience at 2560. So if you need to kind of consider how this card would be performing at 1080p, it's only going to perform that much faster and that much more responsive under a significantly lower resolution as opposed to the 2560 by 1440 resolutions that we're running at, uh, whether that's going to be a single GPU or even two GPUs. So with that, let's go ahead and first jump into some of the performance aspects for our card, uh, starting off with temperatures. Okay guys, so first up we're just going to give you a little bit of perspective when it comes relative to temperatures. So here you're going to see actually in the GPU tweak screenshots that we're showing you a couple of different aspects. One, our baseline idle temperatures for the card were very, very cool. Uh, in average, you're going to be looking somewhere between about 30 to about 33C for the idle base temperature. And of course the card at that state is going to be essentially almost near silent operation. But we're going to talk more about acoustics and some other parameters uh, in our next segment here. The overall average temperatures you're going to have under normal gaming experience, uh, whether they're going to be at 1080p or going to be as much as QHD resolutions like 2560 by 1440, it's going to be averaging between about 62 to about 66C. So the card's going to be running really nice and cool. Uh, overall, you don't need to worry about any type of thermal characteristics. And keep in mind, this was under the most kind of stressful 3D-based applications you can get out there, whether they're things like Witcher 2 uh, with high base settings, uh, Battlefield 3, uh, or Unigen, which also is a great way to kind of test your baseline temperature performance in a consistent looping fashion. Uh, so overall, 65 to 66C in terms of your peak. Uh, in some rare situations, you might be looking at a little bit of variance between cards, and that could maybe get up to about 68C. Um, in terms of the overall fan duty cycle, in terms of how much of the card is being utilized, it's generally getting to about a fan duty percentage of about 67 to about 69%, and that gives you about an approximate speed of about 23 to 2400 RPM. Uh, but overall, uh, as we noted, it's going to be a very quiet overall operating card, so uh, you still got significant amount of headroom to not only increase the thermal performance to go go ahead and aid in stability and overclocking should you want that. In terms of the maximum GPU boost clock that ties into our temperature, because keep in mind GPU boost 2.0, um, the cooler you can keep the card, the higher that the actual card can overclock, is that we were consistently looking at about uh, 1.136 in terms of the frequency. So 1136 was our overall kind of sustained boost clock frequency in game when running uh, benchmarks. This is going to give you a great level of performance, especially when compared to the reference card. And uh, wrapping things up in terms of our overall power target, our power target utilization, which is an important marker which defines uh, also some aspects of the overclocking capability of the card, is approximately about 65 to about 75%. Uh, percent. So with that, let's talk a little bit more about acoustics and how that ties into some of the aspects that we've touched on uh, for temperature-based performance. Okay guys, so next up, now that we've talked a bit about temperatures, we're going to talk a bit about acoustics. Of course, one of the hallmarks of DirectCU 2 Series graphics cards is not only do they run very cool, but they run very quiet under uh, load. And you're definitely going to continue to have that same type of experience here in the card, uh, whether it's going to be in a single GPU or it's going to be in two GPUs. Now, as we noted earlier, in terms of the overall average fan speed, uh, you're going to be looking between about 2300 to about 2400 in terms of what's going to consistently be the rotating speed for the fans uh, underneath gaming load. Uh, for an extended period of time uh, and with no breaks in between level loading. Of course, uh, lighter base engines are going to, of course, be able to run at a lower uh, RPM metric, and that's going to go from the card probably being at the standpoint where, um, in my experience and, and based on my, my analysis, you're looking at essentially near silent operation. You know, in our amniotic chamber when we're testing it, we're looking at approximately about 29 to 30 dB. So, a very quiet based uh, experience when it comes to the overall card itself. And when we talk about that fan speed being about 23 to 2400, RPM and the overall fan duty being approximately about 69 to 70 percent, there's still quite a bit of additional room. Uh, the card's peak RPM metric will be a little bit over about 3,500 RPM. So you can see that within that, not only can you it can additionally increase the, the cooling performance, uh, but the card still has quite some way in terms of spinning up and revving up to be a quite a bit more noticeable card. But even I'd say at 100 percent utilization, while it would be a clearly audible based solution inside of a well steel chassis, um, it's actually going to probably only be a moderate hum 
in terms of the overall pitch. So even for you guys that are looking for the absolute highest level of cooling performance and overclockability, the acoustics are still going to be quite solid. But at defaults, you're going to be looking at an overall experience that's about near silent operation. Uh, so with that, let's go ahead and jump into our next aspect of performance, which is going to be gameplay. Uh, from here, we're going to predominantly be focusing at uh, two-way based SLI configurations, but we will be touching a little bit on single base card performance as well. Okay guys, so first up in terms of our gameplay performance, we've gone ahead and set up our testbed configuration in SLI, so we're running two GPUs, and uh, we've gone ahead and utilized the GeForce Experience software to go ahead and automatically detect the games that we're going to be running, and that's also going to go ahead and give us our preset um, levels of uh, profiles in terms of optimizing all the gameplay experience parameters to go ahead and give us a fast, fluid, and responsive, but still high quality gaming experience. So here I'm just going to kind of quickly scroll through the options for you so you guys can see what we have enabled. You can see that we're fully taking advantage of the advanced NVIDIA architecture in terms of what these GPUs have to offer and fully taking advantage of their high performance nature. So uh, things like advanced fog, advanced lighting, ambulant occlusion, antroscopic filtering, cost, cloth simulation, all that stuff is enabled ultra high. I'll continue to scroll down here and you can guys can see that pretty much we're running with just about all the aspects fully enabled. Even things like multi-sampling, we're at an eight times MSSAA uh, fully enabled in terms of that. Um, we've got objects at ultra, particles at ultra, post-processing enabled, and of course our resolution is we're running at a native QHD resolution 2560 by 1440. So uh, the great thing about this is we didn't have to worry about any settings. We just click them with the GeForce experience and we're good to go. So let's go ahead and jump into the gameplay, uh, run through a, a quick course on the track in Grid 2 and see what performance looks like. Okay guys, so we're going to go ahead and show you guys some Grid 2 here. Uh, of course, the games in QHD resolutions, we're filming this in 1080p, so you're not going to be able to see every single detail, but the game still definitely is fully taking advantage of a huge amount of the modern generation aspects that you're going to have in a current generation uh, title. So everything from ambulant occlusion to advanced post-processing, particle lighting, cloth simulation, all kinds of really crazy things. Um, the great thing about it is we didn't have to worry about any of those. We just utilized uh, the, the GeForce Experience software to go ahead and enable all these parameters go ahead and give us a great look and go ahead and, and create a more immersive gameplay experience and of course with these two high performance GPUs and SLI and you can see here the scaling uh, which is indicated by our graph we're getting great performance out of this at this point right now I'm looking just about shy of a or actually a little bit over 200 frames a second so a real high level of performance and awesome scaling so uh, that gives you a little bit of performance perspective in regards to grid 2 so with that let's go ahead and actually jump into our next title Okay guys, so next up, we've got an awesome indie title for you here, giving you a little bit of different perspective. The great thing is uh, with Trine 2, it's actually utilizing the Frostbite-based engine. So this is the same engine that actually powers Battlefield 3. Um, so you have a really awesome game uh, that has just an entirely different type of dynamic and gameplay experience uh, because of its kind of platformer roots. In terms of, uh, of course, all our settings, we've pretty much maxed this game title out 2560 by 1440. For anti-aliasing, we've gone ahead and taken advantage of the FXAA and two times super sampling anti-aliasing technology. Now uh, you can see that there's actually a couple of different levels including even a highest level extreme FXSAA with a four times super sampling and that's actually still even playable in this configuration. And keep in mind we have not even overclocked the cards um, but I feel that this level allows for even a smoother level of gameplay experience although all of them are entirely playable, so it's really up to you in terms of what you feel most comfortable with. And of course, in terms of the graphical detailing options, we've gone ahead and selected the highest level, so very high. Uh, really has this game looking just outright gorgeous. So let's jump into Trine 2 and show you a little bit of the performance. Okay guys, we've gone ahead and jumped into Trine 2, and you can already see right there in the left-hand corner, we've got our FPS marker, and that's locked in at 100 frames a second in terms of the gameplay experience. And really Trine 2, I mean, it's just an amazing title when you consider its overall uh, kind of creative aspects in terms of how the game looks and feel and uh, when you add in the aspects of what this engine can offer it really looks amazing. Uh, keep in mind that also one of the really cool things about this game engine is that you can take advantage of um, NVIDIA's 3D technology and with the 3D technology this game just is amazing looking uh, if you take advantage of a 3D based monitor like one of our VG series panels. So let's go ahead and just prop this guy up here. And the great thing is, uh, regardless of the different type of environments that we're going to travel through here in terms of the gameplay experience, it's still going to be an outstanding level of performance. Um, whether, you're, whether you're in the darkness uh, and you're taking advantage of a lot of the specular lighting that's occurring with a lot of the advanced uh, filters that are carrying on in-game, 
uh, as well as other aspects. So here we're going to go into a little bit of a brighter environment you can see with one of the secondary characters in Trine. And you can see a huge amount of the actual lighting technology that they have built into this game that really shows off its actually graphics capability. But we're still holding just a super smooth performance. And this is where I was talking about that even if you want to go ahead and take advantage of higher levels of anti-aliasing, and even give a finer and sharper, cleaner image in terms of your total gameplay experience, you're going to be averaging a frame rate of about uh, 30 frames a second, uh, depending on what's happening on screen. So overall, uh, definitely two of these GPUs, you can see we're, uh, we're approaching pretty much the maximal level of scaling that's available and uh, really providing an outstanding performance uh, here in Trine 2. So with that, let's go ahead and take a look at, at our next game engine uh, with a brand new free-to-play game with Marvel Heroes. Okay guys, next up is an awesome brand new free to play uh, title out there for you guys that are fans of uh, comic book uh, based titles. Uh, here we've got brand new uh, Marvel Heroes and so we've gone ahead and set this pretty much the maximum based image quality setting. So 2560 graphics level is set to very high and there's actually quite a number of advanced uh, features that they've gone ahead and incorporated into this game engine. Uh, it's actually utilizing the Unreal uh, based engine so it is uh, quite flexible in terms of the graphical quality they can offer. So with that let's go ahead and actually jump in game. Okay guys, let's go ahead and destroy some agents of evil. Throw a little thunderstorm their way. And you can see overall, even with the massive particle effects, all the characters on screen, uh, it's definitely actually taxing, uh, but we're still keeping a really fluid and outstanding gaming experience, which is really nice for these type of open world environments where you've got a lot of gameplay dynamic occurring real time, a huge amount of characters coming on screen, a lot of particle effects occurring, and you're going to want to be able to have a, a, a great frame latency which helps to ensure that the game kind of feels smooth and responsive. And you've seen that it kind of we've been dropping anywhere from about as much as 100 frames all the way down to I think about 45 frames, but overall a really great level of gameplay experience. Uh, and that mirrors even when you have a huge amount of content on screen uh, with lots of enemies. So that gives you a little bit of perspective here here on a, an awesome new title that we have with Marvel vs. Heroes. So with that, let's go ahead and wrap things up um, with uh, probably one of the hardest graphical engines on the market right now and take a look at Witcher 2, um, essentially maxed out. All right, next up, guys, uh, we're going to round it out here with Witcher 2 and give you just a little bit of another performance preview uh, with an awesome title. I mean, when we pretty much talk about uh, an RPG-based RPG title, uh, this is pretty much bringing it and pushing it to the limits in terms of what is currently available on the PC, really taking advantage of a huge amount of technological advances that you have within the gameplay engine to really give you a high level of image fidelity and really an immersive gameplay experience. So once again, we've gone ahead and utilized the GeForce Experience software to go ahead and provide us an optimal level of set and it's gone ahead and enabled everything from anti-aliasing to bloom to blur effects to depth of field, um, you know, to decals. I mean, it's all in here. We're scrolling through them, giving you a little bit of perspective. Uh, you know, we've got motion blur. We're running things at, at 2560 by 1440. Shadow quality set to ultra. Um, you know, we've got, of course, advanced aspects in terms of texture memory and, and a lot of these aspects really tiled in. So um, we're definitely taking advantage of the SLI here. So let's Go ahead and just jump into the engine and take a look at what the gameplay experience looks like with two of these cards in Witcher 2. Okay guys, so we've jumped into the Witcher 2 here. As we noted, we're using the GeForce Experience software to go ahead and maximize our gameplay settings to give us a fast and fluid responsive level. So let's just go ahead and jump into some gameplay here. And you can see here that definitely even with all the characters on screen, all the effects occurring in the background, uh, we're keeping a really smooth and responsive level of gameplay. So let's go ahead and just uh, push on a little bit further in the game and continue to see what our performance looks like here. And we can see even when we stop here and just take a look at the advanced rendering that's all happening in game uh, with all the advanced effects in gameplay, we're, we're not even moving in terms of the framework. We're still keeping a really fast and fluid and responsive environment. So uh, let's go ahead and jump into the next section here and uh, take a little bit more at some gameplay. All right, guys, so let's just finish it up here with a cool little uh, onslaught of the enemy. Alright guys, so that overall gives you a, a little bit of perspective in terms of the gameplay on The Witcher 2. 
And overall, you can see even here even with this game engine, we have an awesome level of performance and gameplay experience is really outstanding on two of these cards in SLI. So uh, for you guys that are, of course, interested always in 1080p based information, keep in mind that this is all running at 2560 with a high degree of performance settings enabled. You could easily go ahead and still maintain the outstanding gaming experience at 1080p. Okay guys, now that we've gone ahead and wrapped up the gameplay performance, we're just going to talk quickly about overclocking. Um, all our series graphics cards feature our award-winning software with our GPU Tweak graphics card tuning utility. This allows you to modify everything from the voltages to the fan speeds to the effective clocks for the GPU boost frequency as well as for the memory. Uh, for you guys that are interested in having some kind of baseline targets to go ahead and play with to overclock your graphics card, it's going to be really simple. All we're going to need to do is go ahead and open up the utility, uh, make sure that it's in advanced mode. Once we're in advanced mode, just go ahead and click into these boxes because we support manual entry. And go ahead and start off with uh, a value as little as about 1125. And for the memory, about 6200. Uh, hit enter and apply. And then from there, I'd recommend go ahead and running a baseline benchmark such as like, let's say, Sniper or Alien vs. Predator. Something that is quick but very stressful and will also give you an actual FPS result at the end. So an example would be if we went to our documents folder at the end of a benchmark run, um, you'll actually show up a result in here and that you could go ahead and reference and see what your performance is. From there, you can go ahead and increase uh, both the GPU boost frequency and the memory frequency until you get to a, an effective ceiling. Uh, my recommendation probably for most of you guys at what's going to be the upper end and won't require generally any voltage adjustment is going to be 1175 and the memory being at 6600. Uh, with that, the card still maintains a really cool and quiet level of operation. Most of the time, the temperature is going to be between about 67 to about 70 C, and your power target is just going to be just shy of about 100%, and in most situations, won't require any voltage increase. Um, but this will provide a nice boost up in terms of the overall performance. And of course, if you guys are running two GPUs, all you're going to need to do is just go into the GPU tweak and select sync all cards, and that will effectively link all your adjustments real time to both the GPUs and that gives you guys some insight for overclocking your ASUS GeForce GTX 760. Alright guys, so that wraps up uh, our overall performance uh, coverage in terms of our brand new ASUS GeForce GTX 760 DirectCU2 graphics card. Overall, I think it really shows that this card, for its price point, uh, is really offering an outstanding level of performance not only in single card, but definitely dual card configurations, offering you a cool and quiet experience that offer our, offers a huge amount of overclockability. And uh, when paired up with something like the GeForce Experience software, really makes gaming uh, a great and easy and fluid experience. Um, experience. You know, as always, uh, we'd love to hear your guys' feedback. We went ahead and we kind of developed a little bit of a different format uh, for this performance preview for you guys, and we'd like to kind of try to keep this going forward. Uh, so whether it's in respect to the temperatures, the acoustic, the gameplay, or the overclocking section, we'd love to see that feedback here on the YouTube page in the comment section. Or you can also feel free to go ahead and hit us up at our ASUS North America Facebook pages, our ASUS North America Twitter pages, uh, or go ahead and also shoot me an email here also on the YouTube page, and I'll do my best to get back to you when I can. So as always, we appreciate you guys checking out the video. Please make sure and subscribe for more content. We're just going to keep having additional content coming. And uh, make sure to like the video. And as always, thank you for watching.